Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We had a great event today with Hamza Chimaev and the guys here in Birmingham. I just want to say that before you watch this video, you're going to have a good time watching it, trust me. Before you watch this video, click the link below and donate to Prophet of Palestine. These guys, 313, have been fully vetted. They're on the ground 100%. They're doing great work. We need you to donate. It's going to be amazing. Watch the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. And a special assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi to you, Hamza. How are you? Alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi. Alhamdulillah, very good brother. Nice to be here, brother. See all my brothers on the air. So good. Well, I think everyone will agree that it's nice to see you too. Would you agree? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you some questions. Um, a lot of things, as you know, are happening in Palestine and other places. And we really appreciate the fact that you're here in this charity event. Okay, it's good to see a fighter coming outside of his comfort zone and doing things like this. And I wanted to ask you, how does it make you feel, first of all, what seeing what you're seeing in Palestine? It's, you can't say these things with the words, but I say you feel in the heart, how hard is it? So everyone knows what's happening in Palestine now. So it's, I'm in almost the same country like this. We went through the same thing. So we had the war in the country as well. Somebody knows about that, so we know about that, you know. And uh, it's hard, hard kids dying, you know. So we see in today, like in the movies, the kids dying, you know, but now it's in real life, the kids dying, you know. So it's hard. Inshallah, we hope soon it's over, and inshallah, we make dua every day, and uh, I don't know what to say, brother. It feels. It's no words for that, brother. You were asked one time um, by one of the reporters about how you feel, and you came across as quite emotional. And a lot of people grew in respect for you because they saw a side of you that it cared about other people. It cared about your Muslim brothers and sisters. You care about other human beings, children who are being hurt, mothers, children. What message would you send to decision makers, policy makers, in terms of a ceasefire, in terms of stopping what's happening in, in, in terms of uh, Palestine? So first I want to say stay strong to these guys, uh, to these people. Uh, inshallah, everything is not like forever. It's everything going to get over, you know, so um, whatever war and hard times in your life, everything is going to get over, right? We, all humans, you know, maximum, like, get alive in 100 years, so it's over, you know, so we have to fix our life is dead when we die, but inshallah, the kids who is dying, they, we know it's they, they go, they straight away, they go into paradise, huh? so some way makes happy when you feel, it, you, when you, when you know they go to paradise, and mm -hmm. someday, it's hard to see them, how they die, you know, how they go there, how, how it's hard. So I want to say, say to these people, stay strong, and inshallah, so everything will be good. You've been, you said yourself, you've been through some of that in Chechnya yourself. You saw war, you saw fighting, you saw, how has that shaped your life? How has that made you a different man? So I've been a kid, I was a kid that time. I didn't understand it's a war of that time, kids, don't know what is it war it's uh, when you're a kid uh, you, it's become first day is hard makes you scared a second day like start to become a normal then you think it all the world is like that you know so a kid is kid i was kid that time mm -hmm. and the most of the things i remember is was after the war because i was like when it was a war i was like born then after the war i was six years so it was hard time and not so much food, like, you know, like everyone staying like family, like they do now. All of us, all Muslims stay for them, like for Palestine now. So, yeah, there's a lot of hard things we went through as well. And inshallah, they will be stronger people, you know, so they will come back. Inshallah, that country will be free. We pray for that. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, I don't know if you saw, but there was some 
back and forth between Sean Strickland and Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad said something very simple like, pray for Palestine. And then Sean Strickland, he called him a coward. He attacked him. He started attacking Islam. He started attacking uh, Bilal Muhammad. Then I went, uh, I said something to him myself on Twitter. I said, why didn't you mention Hamzat? Because Hamzat Chumayev, he said something similar. He said, pray for Palestine, something like that. Do you think Sean Strickland is afraid of you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man, so it shouldn't be the fact. He has to be afraid, so I can't be for him. <laughs> so, inshallah, we, we fight with everyone, so... We the, the the fights in the cage is not that big thing, you know. We, if we can make some people happy who is going through hard times, and Muslims, all Muslims watching us, and me and Habib, all the Muslim fighters, Bilal, and uh, we know we know that all of all of all of the kids, our kids, they're watching. They wants to be like us, and to wants to be the strong people. Inshallah, we. We try to be a good picture for them. Uh, that Sean Strickland, all these guys, they should be afraid of us. We we fight not just for us, like they do. We fight for all Muslims. That's right. Yeah. Now, you've trained with Sean Strickland in the past. What do you make of him? I know it's not good gym etiquette to talk about, you know, your sparrings and stuff. But he, he surprised us with his performance against Israel Adesanya. His striking was quite clean and crisp and efficient. He, he knocked him down. Did you find him difficult in the sparring? No, it was the same fighter. I knew, I knew this fight can I have something is, is strange, but... Uh, Oh, I was thinking like if Sean Strickland not get down like in first round, I was thinking he's gonna win the fight. But I didn't say to anyone. I was just holding myself. Say it's happening. So he win the fight. He's one of the like good fighters, not bad. So, but for us, it's no problem. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, it's no problem, man. <laughs> he won't be able to deal with your double leg takedown. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No way. Well, I mean, that's a, an interesting thing because Sean Strickland has been saying some very negative things. I think everybody would want to see him being demolished. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And I think... Th yeah. <laughs> I, I think that Sean Strickland is the next match for you. Would you agree with this? Do you think Dana White should make that fight? 100%. If he has the fight now, who is winning the fight, he has a good fighter who is fighting with mm. uh, Duplessis. And if he wins against this guy, so for sure we're going to fight. 100% should be. They promised for me that fight. And so now we're going to wait who is winning the fight and then take the belt. You are in Birmingham and this is the city of Leon Edwards. But having said that... <laughs> The Muslim population in Birmingham is 30%. So I have a feeling that if you fought Leon Edwards, the people will be on your side here in Birmingham. What do you think? Yeah, of course, but I feel like a home here, man. So Alhamdulillah, it's, I'm so happy. So a lot of Muslims, we're going out every day. I've been here before as well with Danad, and we go out and see all our Muslim brothers. They say, Salaam Alaikum, it makes me happy, you know? And uh, around the world, wherever we go, so when you see a Muslim, when he says "Salam alaikum," it makes you happy because you see you will find your brother, you know. I'm gay. Tell us more about your relationship with God. Like, do you pray every day? You read Quran. What kind of things do you do in terms of Islam? Alhamdulillah, I pray every day. It makes, I always, when I was a kid, my brother said to me, like, that makes different uh, Muslim as not Muslim. They, when you pray, when you pray five times a day, since, since that time I prayed every day, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I'm, I, I don't say, like, you want to say I'm the 
best Muslim and so on. So because yeah. I'm a hashtag, like all of people all of us, like mm. happen like wrong things and try to make it better. So Hamza, put the put the mic a bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah, we're trying to uh, Ramadan like fasting and five days praying, uh, listening like the imams who is like translate. I can't uh, read the Quran. I like, listen the who translate the Quran to me. Like watching a lot of videos and a uh, lot of good uh, imams, listening to them go in most mosque as well. Do you do you listen to any particular speakers? Yeah. Like your Nike as well. Oh, you listen to him? Yeah, listen Allah. to him. And like we as in back home in Chechnya, different, so listen to them as well. Mm. That's very good. Um, do you think that, you know, when you, you're, you're a Muslim, obviously you believe in God, you believe in there's a higher power, you believe God has the plan. All of these things we have, as you know, tawakkul, the idea of tawakkul, reliance on God. These are key Islamic principles. Do you think that helps you when you're fighting? Of course, when you believe Allah, it makes you stronger than people. When you believe in nothing, it's you, you, you alone in the world. When you have so much power, when you in your heart, when you believe Allah, it's always been Allah been helping me everywhere. When you get the bad times, Alhamdulillah, it makes me out from everywhere. I've been living in the gym, didn't have a food, didn't have a money. Alhamdulillah, where I am today, you know. So he makes me the people I am today. So I'm grateful for that. So Allah being always with us. So, so he makes me much stronger people when I think about him. So no, nothing can make us uh, scared, you know, when Allah with us. Can I ask you a question? You're 29 years old now, right? Yes. Um, Usually the fighter finishes at, let's say, retires at 40 or something like that. I don't know, maybe in your division, it's less or more, I don't know, right? But have you thought about what you're going to do after fighting? Yes, of course. So uh, I start 23 and being first time in the gym. So now I'm 29. So you see all these fights, everything. So I have my family, my husband, boy. So... Inshallah, try to do better things for the kids and uh, make them uh, uh, choose the better way, a good way. Don't do the wrong things. Uh, teach them train, be hard. And so I'm going to try to uh, teach me as well. So Quran, read Quran as well. Because there's a common saying, people say that the, the sportsman dies two deaths. What they mean by that is that a lot of people, when they retire, because all they know is their sport, they become depressed afterwards because they're not doing that anymore. So we've seen a lot of sports people, without mentioning names, do that. And so thinking about what you're going to do after fighting can sometimes be a very important thing because, as I say, fighting is going to take about 10 years of your life. After that, it's going to be maybe training, but maybe what you're doing here, charity. Yeah. Have you thought about that a little bit more? Yeah, of course, always being open for uh, the helping for the people and doing charity, all these things, media, and we, if we can help with something, with some way, it's, it just say the world. Mm. Uh, always be open for that. This, this is uh, when I start and I see in the videos, uh, there was uh, a lot of people around the world in Africa, out the food, a lot of people there as well, so I had a hard time. Uh, always been my dream to mm. help some people that makes me happy when you help somebody is is different different happiness so inshallah i'm gonna do this and gonna help kids everything will be open for everything brother so mm. how do you want to be remembered well, so you said you said something very powerful before i don't know if they heard it but you said in a hundred years we're not going to be here. Like in a hundred years, everyone is going to be dead. And that's a very powerful thing. And that's something the Prophet Muhammad actually told us as well. So when we're all gone, how do you want to be remembered? Sure, everyone as we are, human, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad, he's never, never, we never, we're never going to forget him, you know. So he is our Prophet. And we are human. If we die, everyone will forget us anyway. So sometimes some people will speak about, yeah, he's been a fighter, but I'm just a fighter fighting in the cage. 
and uh, being people, Khalid bin Walid, and all these guys, they're never going to be forget. They will speak about that. So for me, it's important and be a good human, be a good Muslim. And when I go, go there and get my paradise. I'll... Yeah, I think what you're doing is extremely important. Like a lot of the, the top fighters, even in boxing, Muhammad Ali being one of them, right? We don't just remember them because of what they did inside of the ring. We, we remember them because of what they did outside of the ring. And by coming here and showing solidarity with the people of Palestine, this will never be forgotten, will it? And this is the kind of thing which, inshallah, will be part of your legacy in dunya and the akhirah. Inshallah. But I wanted to um, put something to you. This is a charity event, as you know. And uh, just like you like to challenge yourself, I also like to challenge myself. And what I wanted to say is that, look, uh, we're trying to raise money for charity today. And uh, it would be an honor and a privilege if me and you did some grappling in front of these people. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, um, I, I got my friend to get the mats. And he will bring it upstairs <laughs> in the middle of this place. We'll do the first one uh, to do a takedown. They will win. Is this okay with you? Brother, we need you alive, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but under one condition, under one condition, under one condition, that when the fundraising happens, okay, when the fundraising happens, that we need to get at least 250,000 sterling pounds today okay we will we will not do anything unless you especially me i don't want to do anything with this man <laughs> unless this money is paid for charity and inshallah it will be fantastic is that something okay of course will thank you so much brother okay with that i'll let you meet hamzat and at the same time we'll bring the mats up i'll get changed and we'll see you in the middle of the ring <laughs> take care my friend thank you.